again. My name is Denise. I'm the Internship Program Coordinator at Students Rising Above, and today's topic will be on informational interviews. So, what is an informational interview? Essentially what this is, is a casual conversation with somebody in a career or a field that interests you. So say there's a particular job title, a career or industry, even a company that you're interested in and you want to learn more about, you can conduct an informational interview with a current employee to again get more of that insider scoop as to what the day to day is like and what the career trajectory was for that person to getting to where they are. Additionally, it helps take your career exploration to the next level. So as I've mentioned, you get more of um, an insider scoop into what life is like in this particular position or industry. And a lot of that information you may not actually be able to find online. So while there is a lot of information on company and organization's mission and about pages, there's something really valuable about having that personal touch from somebody who currently works at a given company or organization. You can also get those real life details about a job that you wouldn't find online. So those more day to day logistics that you wouldn't necessarily find online on any of the websites that you use when you're looking for a specific job or company. Lastly, it's especially important to remember that informational interviews are not job interviews. So you're not there to market yourself or your skills and the end goal isn't to land a position, but rather your purpose there is to get more of that information about what you should be orienting your goals towards in order to get to where you wanna be at a specific industry or career. So what are some of the benefits of informational interviewing? There are definitely a lot of them. So as I've mentioned already a few times, one of the main benefits is you get real life information. So it's especially valuable for you to get more of a sense of what has this person's experience been and how can that inform my decision in continuing to pursue this career or this job title or company that I'm interested in. Next, it helps you learn those good and bad aspects of a job. So I've had a couple of conversations with students at SRA and beyond about, you know, what should I ask during informational interviews and getting to know as much as possible about what the career entails or what the company culture is like is really important because you do want to make sure that what you're looking for is aligned with what they can offer you. Next, it helps you understand the steps you need to take to achieve a certain career goal. So one of the really great things about conducting informational interviews is that you have that one on one interaction with somebody and you get to know a little bit more about their career trajectory. So what did they major in in college? What were some of the internships that they had when they were in college? Maybe they had certain jobs that led them to where they were now. So those little decisions and even major milestones can be really informative for you in determining where you want to take your career path to get to a certain goal. It also helps you build your professional network. So even if you don't necessarily end up choosing this certain career industry or company, whatever the case may be, you have a contact now. And so long as you establish that contact and actively and consistently cultivate that relationship, you've just added somebody to your professional network and that can lead you to some really great opportunities later on that will contribute to your professional development. Next, as similar to what I've mentioned before, helps you evaluate if a certain job or industry is right for you. So you can have an idea of, or perception of what a specific industry or career path is like, but you won't really know exactly what it is until you've talked to somebody who's fully immersed in the field at the moment. So that can give you really valuable insight as to whether this is something that really aligns with what you're looking for, if it contributes to the competencies that you want to continue building, and that's really important for you to know. You can also get resume feedback. So that's actually one of the questions that you can even ask um, your interviewee when you're conducting one of these informational interviewers, uh, these interviews, which is, what are some things that I can improve upon in my resume? Because again, that contributes to the previous point of understanding steps that you need to take to achieve a career goal. So figuring out how to develop your resume and make it really strong for a specific position or field is really valuable to know as well. 
It can also help increase your confidence by discussing your career interests and goals with another person. Professional development, career development is a very broad and sometimes really intimidating topic. And when it's all in your head or you're just kind of doing it by yourself, it can definitely seem really overwhelming and you might not really know where to go. When you have that opportunity to sit down with somebody and talk face to face about what their experience was like getting to a certain position, that can provide some much needed advice for where you should go and really grow your confidence in terms of where you want to um, lead yourself in your professional development journey. And lastly, can also really help you improve your business and interpersonal communication skills. So this is one of those transferable skills that's super, super valuable to all employers. Transferable skills being those skills that you can take with you from job to job regardless of what the industry is or what past experience you may have. So being able to conduct yourself in a strong professional manner while also effectively communicating on an interpersonal level is something that's incredibly valuable to employers and is certainly something that you can continue to build on in these informational interviews as well. So now that we have a sense of what informational interviews are and what some of the benefits are, we can start to break down how you should prepare it for informational interviews, what types of questions you should be asking during the conversation, and how to follow up after the conversation. So step one is you want to write down your careers of interest. So whether it's in a journal, a notepad, a Google Doc, anywhere that you like to record and document all of your information and centralize all of that, you write down careers, companies, fields, or even job titles that you're interested in. Something that I especially like to remind students is try not to overthink it and don't worry about whether or not you're qualified. Remember, informational interviews aren't about wanting to get a job at the end. That is not the objective. The objective is for you to get some advice and some insight on how to get to a particular career, industry, or job title that you are interested in. So really this is just a way for you to organize your thoughts and make sure that you're leading yourself exactly where you need to and get the information that you're really looking for. The next step is professional network brainstorming. So once you have an idea of certain companies or job titles or industries that you would like to know more about, that's where you start reaching out to people to see if they know others who could lead you to somebody in those specific areas. So you want to start with your immediate network, and this can include a wide variety of people. This can be close friends, family members, teachers or professors, any mentors, coaches, coworkers, or other community members. And you just start by asking if they know anybody in this specific company or in XYZ industry. And by doing that, that can start leading you towards more specific areas where you can conduct these informational interviews and really ensure that you're getting that valuable information that you're looking for. The next step, once you've tapped into your immediate network, is to look into your extended network. So these are the friends of friends, distant family, or maybe community members that you don't know too well. And that's a really great way of really expanding your horizons because I always let our students know, you don't know who other people know, so you always want to tap into as many resources as possible because more often than not, you'll be surprised where you find somebody who can help you with your professional development journey, including helping you out with these informational interviews. And last but not least, your virtual network. So especially now, virtual networks are really a critical and awesome resource for networking and reaching out to people for conducting those informational interviews. So some example of these that you know, most of you may be pretty familiar with are LinkedIn and Glassdoor. Others include Be Visible, Meetup, Eventbrite, Twitter, all sorts of digital outlets that you can use to find folks who are in the careers that you want to pursue, any companies or industries, and we actually have some really great templates on the hub that can help you write out those messages when you request those informational interviews, which is what we're going to get into. So once you have a contact or multiple contacts, depending on how you're going about your search, you want to arrange your informational interview. 
So you can either email or call new contacts. I would strongly suggest folks email their contacts just because that is the most accessible way to reach people nowadays. However, if you happen to find that calling somebody is easier, especially if you learned of this contact through somebody in your network and they've let you know that they prefer to be called, then go ahead and do that. If not, I would say safe bet is always to email. You wanna introduce yourself and explain that you're looking for career information. So this is where you give a little bit of context as to who you are, where you go to school, what your major's in, and what specific information you're looking for. Whether it's in a particular role or an industry, you want to make sure you're as clear about that as possible so the person knows what you're hoping to get out of this conversation. The next part, which is super, super important, is you wanna let them know how you got their contact information. So if you're emailing somebody, let them know this is somebody that either you found on your own or that you learned of through somebody in your network. If it is the second case, then you can also feel free to ask the person to introduce you as well. So if this is somebody you learned of through a mentor, a professor, a family member, whoever, feel free to ask them if they can introduce you to this contact. If not, you want to be very clear with the person that you got their information through somebody that you both know mutually. Because as we all know, it's kind of disorienting to receive an email or anything from someone that you don't know who is asking for something. So you really want to make sure that you're clear about that when you reach out to your interviewee. The next part, which is also super important, is you want to make sure that they know you are not looking for a job. You very clearly want to emphasize that you're looking for career information, some advice and some insight, and that the end objective isn't to look for a job. Rather, the emphasis is on the person you want to interview and their personal experiences in a given position, company, or industry. As I mentioned a few moments ago, we have some really great resources on the Hub on informational interviews, and one of those are templates. So if you're reaching out to somebody that you do know or that you don't know, we have all those templates available on the Hub. So you just look them up and that can help you prepare to schedule your informational interview, whether it's over virtually, in person, or a phone call. And as always, with any professional setting, you always want to be polite and follow through on all commitments. So just as you would email a professor or a supervisor, you want to make sure that you're doing this with the person that you plan on interviewing. Again, while the end goal isn't to get a job, first impressions are incredibly important in any professional setting. So you definitely want to make sure you're conducting yourself in a professional manner and always following through on commitments. So I always like to set up calendar reminders for myself, even putting them on my phone, setting alarms. Any way that you find works best for you and that you organize your thoughts, definitely feel free to do that to make sure you're following through on everything you say. Next part is actually having your interview. So what kind of questions can you ask is the most common thing that I'm asked about conducting these informational interview questions. And there's really a wide variety of things you can ask about. So here we've listed a few, what your typical day is like, what do you like most or least about your job? What was your major? What job did you have before this one? So as you can see, really trying to get a sense of what this person's career trajectory was like. So what was their undergraduate career like? If they pursued postgraduate degrees, how did that go? And what classes did they take? What were some of the internships that they may have done when they were college students? What were some of the jobs that they had beforehand that led them to where they are now? How would they describe their career path? Was it linear? Was it nonlinear? Did they always know this was something they wanted to do? Or was it like a 180 shift from what they previously envisioned? So there's all sorts of questions you can ask, and I like to break them down as the following. So you can ask about the job and career, so specifically what they're immersed in at the moment. Asking about skills and knowledge. So what are some skills that would set a candidate apart in this industry? What are some competencies that employers at this company or industry are looking for? About choosing a career. So as I mentioned, what made them come to this career or this company? What were the professional development choices that they made along the way that led them to where they are now? Also about networking, asking how was networking beneficial 
to getting them to where they are now? Did they tap into their networks to get to a specific company or land certain internships? And lastly, college. So asking about what were some of the classes that they took? What was their major like? Did they switch majors? How many times did they switch majors? All those sorts of things that ultimately contribute to somebody's professional development are all very valuable things to ask. And so those are the kinds of things that you want to be mindful of throughout the conversation itself. So once you've done that, you, when you're in the um, actual conversation, you remember you want to be as professional as possible. Remember, as I mentioned, although this is not a job interview, informational interviews are still taking place in a professional setting. So you want to behave professionally and politely because this person is also taking time out of their day to give you that more personal insight onto their career trajectory and how they got to where they were. So you really want to be mindful and respectful of that. You want to proofread all your emails and texts, and that's not just including spell check. I personally like to read my things out loud or use the dictation um, tool on my computer just so I can hear what my correspondence sounds like because oftentimes spell check alone won't pick up on those small grammatical things or typos that um, you know, might ultimately change the meaning of a sentence or a phrase. So I always try to read them out loud whenever possible and then make sure that I make those edits before I send it out. Make sure to always respond to all emails or phone calls within 24 hours. Again, this is somebody who's taking time out of their day, most likely a very busy schedule, to talk to you about what their professional experience is like. So you want to be really respectful of their time and so always responding to any correspondence, whether it's virtually or phone calls within 24 hours is a must. As I've mentioned, being respectful of the person's time also means preparing questions in advance. So these next two bullet points very much go hand in hand. So just as you want to respond to all correspondences within 24 hours and behaving politely in the moment and afterwards, you want to prepare your questions in advance. So whether you have them written out on a Google Doc in front of you, if it's a virtual meeting, or having them on a notepad if you happen to meet in person, you want to make sure that you have those prepared beforehand so you're not really winging it the day of. The person wants to make sure that you have an agenda, you have a very clear understanding of what your objective is with this conversation. So you wanna make that really clear by having your questions in advance. If you do find additional questions just flow organically throughout the course of the conversation, definitely feel free to ask them, but always be sure to use your prepared questions as a reference point. Always arrive 10 minutes early if you're meeting in person or call at the exact time if you're meeting via the phone or virtually. Meeting early also just helps you settle in, calm yourself. If you know, you're feeling a little bit nervous, lets you use the restroom, anything that you need to do. And also just lets the person know again that you're respecting their time and you're not showing up late because you understand that they most likely have a very busy schedule. I personally like to spend a few minutes before a phone call and especially with a virtual setting, with those virtual settings like Zoom or Google Hangouts, whatever the platform is, I like to make sure I arrive at least five minutes before if I am waiting in a waiting room or if I'm going to call, just to make sure that your tech is working correctly, that you have strong Wi-Fi, so that that doesn't become an issue throughout the course of the conversation and it just disrupts the dialogue. You also want to dress appropriately and professionally. Again, while it isn't a job interview, it's still a professional setting. So you want to make sure that you're respectful of the other person as well by dressing appropriately and professionally, at least from the waist up. Again, I personally like to dress professionally all the way for two reasons. One, it really just helps my mindset and really puts me in the zone, so to speak, and makes me feel like I'm ready to enter a professional setting. But also, you never know if you might have to move around if there's any technical difficulties, and so you want to make sure you're fully dressed professionally. Never ask for a job. That is a very inappropriate question to ask during informational interviews because you have made it clear that your objective is to get some advice and some insight as to how you can contribute to your professional development and get to a certain career or an industry. So you don't want to ask for a job 
And you never want to ask for somebody's salary either. That's another one of those questions that one, just isn't relevant to the conversation, and two, is very rude as well. You can ask questions about what are the general starting salaries for somebody in maybe a specific position in an industry with certain qualifications, but you never want to ask those questions directly to a person on their own personal experience. And last but certainly not least, you want to send a thank you note within 24 hours or less. So just as you respond to all emails or phone calls within that time frame, after you've conducted your informational interview, you want to send that thank you note, reiterating your gratitude for them for spending some time out of their day to talk to you about their professional development, for offering some advice. And we actually have a template for this as well on the hub. So that can help you sort of break down the main points that you want to highlight um, after you've had your informational interview. On another note that is very important because it relates to a point that I mentioned at the beginning that informational interviews are a really great way for you to expand your professional network. So when you follow up and say thank you, you're starting to cultivate that relationship with somebody. And this is now somebody that you can incorporate into your professional network and potentially reach out to later on. Maybe they might even reach out to you with any professional development opportunities that they have, or they might have other people in their network that they can direct you to. So following up, one is not only important because it's just standard professional etiquette, but two is super beneficial for your own professional development at networking in the long term. So just a quick summary of what we talked about today and breaking down how to go about getting professional um, informational interviews. One, you want to brainstorm your careers. So really just let yourself like let loose on those if there's any particular companies or job titles anything that you believe you're interested in, write it all down and make sure you have it clearly in front of you because it can be overwhelming to determine where exactly you wanna go and who you would wanna interview and having it all visualized in front of you can definitely help. Reach out to your contacts. So again, reaching out to those immediate people, whether they be family members, classmates, coworkers, anybody who you know directly, then following up with your extended network. So those are friends of friends, people who know those in your immediate network. And of course, last but not least, those virtual settings such as LinkedIn, Glassdoor, all of those really great resources. You can go ahead and then schedule your interviews once you have the contact information. You can use the templates, as I mentioned, that we host on the Hub in addition to our other resources on informational interviews. Next, you want to write out your questions. So I always like to have just a very clear agenda of what I want to talk about. And having those questions written beforehand and prepared is really helpful for that. Next, once you have that all settled, you meet with the person. Ask the questions that you've prepared beforehand. If anything comes up that you wanna talk about throughout the course of the conversation, definitely feel free to. Always remember that the emphasis is on them. They may be asking things about you and what you're interested in and what your you know, academic or professional history may be. Definitely feel free to talk about it then, but always remember to tie it back to what they can offer you in terms of information and insight. And of course, last but not least, and perhaps one of the most important points is to send a thank you email. So once you've conducted that informational interview with somebody, you want to be grateful for their time that they've taken out of their day to talk to you and impart some very valuable knowledge and also as a way to continue expanding and growing your professional network. So that's just a very rough overview of what informational interviews are. So I definitely want to take a moment first to see if we have any questions in the chat box about informational interviews. It can be about anything that I mentioned, and I'll give folks a few moments to drop any in the chat box. Okay, so one of the questions that we have is, how long do informational interviews usually last? So that's actually a really great question. Informational interviews generally shouldn't be any longer than 30 minutes. So the time frame that I like to use is anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes. 
And it can go longer, but only if the, your, the person you are interviewing explicitly states that and schedules that. Otherwise, if you're scheduling it and you're asking for an informational interview, you don't want it to go past 30 minutes. Again, because these are professionals with full-time jobs who are most likely very busy and have very packed schedules. So unless it's explicitly scheduled by them that it can go past 30 minutes, you wanna schedule it for around 15 to 30 minutes. So that's a really great question, thank you. Okay, I will wait a few more moments to see if anybody has additional questions about anything that we mentioned today. Just launch our post poll. Are there any other questions that folks have about what to ask during an informational interview or anything? Feel free to drop them in the chat box. All right, so if that is all for today, then we can go ahead and wrap up. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining in on today's webinar. Make sure to fill out the post poll questions before you leave, and be sure to be on the lookout for additional Hub webinars that are coming up. So thank you so much, everybody. I hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon or evening, wherever you are, and take care. All right, bye.